Okay, um, it's time, just let us start. Um, thanks everyone for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm, uh, in this talk, I'm going to introduce to you the recent work of our team, that is Visco, uh, our newly developed uh, training frameworks. So first, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Zhu Hongyu. I got my PhD from University of Toronto. Uh, my advisor was uh, Gennady Pekshimanko. We were working on the machine learning system uh, area. I joined TikTok two years ago, and uh, currently I'm working on large language model training frameworks. So in this talk, I will uh, first talk about the motivations of why we try to come up with this uh, V-scale framework, and then we'll get to be a lot of details, talk, talk about a lot of details about uh, uh, how it works, and that will show some like evaluation results, and then uh, the future of Vscale, what we're trying to do next. So, um, as we all know, TikTok is a big company. So this is a rough estimation. Uh, every week we have uh, like hundreds of models that is uh, that are under development or training. So there, before Vscale, there are a lot of you know like training frameworks on the market, of course, and most of them focus on performance. Well, that is great, but uh, the downside of these frameworks is that often they are often very hard to use. One of the example is Megatron. We have a lot of experience with Megatron. Usually, we need to spend many weeks to just write one model with Megatron. And therefore, we, we, we kind of like want to develop, uh, develop our new, uh, our own framework that favor not just performance, but also uh, the ease of use. So why current frameworks are hard to use? We summarize five challenges we're faced with the old frameworks. The first one is that some of them are not PyTorch enough, uh, not, that, uh, does not support PyTorch model. Um, we need PyTorch support because most of the, uh, you know, in, now in open source community, most of the uh, models are in PyTorch. And also, this is the same situation in TikTok. Most of our uh, model code are in PyTorch. That means TensorFlow, Ajax, like, uh, they, they cannot handle these models. And second, uh, which is also the most important challenges we've had with the uh, prior frameworks like Megatron, is that the system, mo system code and the model code, they are intertwined together. So I will explain a little bit what the, what the situation is. So what is system code? So for example, when you do um, data parallel, you have the, uh, you need to do some operations like you need to or reduce the gradients, right? And then what one of the optimizations is that you kind of overlap with this communication with your uh, forward backward computation. This is system thinking, purely system thinking. It does not affect your convergence. And model logic is like you just add a layer to your models, right? So this is purely model thinking and like it changes your neural architecture. And in Megatron, there is something called this. Uh, it's column parallel linear. So this is an interwined system and model design. So in algorithm, it's equivalent to a N linear, but it also has system meaning. So it, like it parallelizes your linear layer uh, in a column-wise style. So that adds a lot of burden to machine learning people. So imagine you are machine learning people and you want to change your model and you add a linear. And at the same time, you have to think about where, whether it should be a row parallel, where it should be a column parallel. And not just that, there are a lot of argue, system arguments are there uh, inside this uh, 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 column parallel linear. So that is a lot of burden. And they may, that makes you know, machine learning people very hard uh, to design your model when you use Megatron. And it's the same way, uh, same thing other way. So if you are system people and try to improve the MFU, right? And you need to like change your code and you can easily touch the model code. 
and that could lead to some like uh, intertwined bugs. And as a result, we need a lot of human efforts to maintain the code, and that is very bad for us. And the third challenge that we face is that most of the existing frameworks are not automatic enough. You need a lot of human efforts to think about, like how do I uh, do, do TP, how do I do PP, how do I cut the PP stage, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of thinking out there, so that adds some extra cost to our development. And the fourth thing is, it is very hard to debug. This is actually a you know, the direct consequence of uh, the interwinding system and model design things. We had experience of having 10 people spending three weeks just finding one bug uh, in Mactron Linear. So that is truly painful. And not just for, you know, Megatron is an eager execution, but there are also compiled execution uh, framework like JAX. The things are even worse because you cannot break into lines of code and print out all the information you need. So let's say if you have an NAM bug, you don't know what's going on, and you know, like um, the debugging thing is very painful. And the last thing we have, the last uh, uh, challenge we have is the uh, there are no checkpointing, distributed checkpointing supported uh, for these uh, prior frameworks. And you know, for for distributed checkpointing, you know, the situation we often have is that first we use thousands of devices. Train you do we do a pre-train first, right? Pre-train a model from scratch and to a certain like checkpoint, and then we need to fine-tune. So fine-tune usually is, are is done in a smaller scale. So what happens here is that we we need to save the checkpoints from a very large cluster and then load the checkpoint to a smaller cluster. So if there are no che distributed checkpointing supported, this is a very inconvenient process. So to address all these five challenges, we propose vScale, um, that is a PyTorch native or the parallel frameworks, and mainly target the ease of use so that we can like quickly, uh, uh, quickly develop our models. So there are a uh, few features here. So first it supports PyTorch native models, of course, and the most important thing is it decouples the system and the model design. So your model code stays in your model code and the system code is in another, uh, they are like in another file. So they are uh, completely decoupled. Changing one does not affect the other. Okay, so in this case, there will be like no interwinding bugs and that means light uh, uh, human maintenance efforts. And the third thing is we're trying to achieve is automatic parallelism. And we're trying to minimize the human efforts when deciding the parallelization plan, how I do TP, how I do TP, blah, blah, blah. And the fourth uh, feature is that it is easy to debug because it supports eager execution. And you can break into your lines of code and print out all the information you need for you know, detecting your errors. And also it supports automatic checkpoints. So like um, we can easily load and sa do safe and load on different scale of your uh, uh, cluster. Okay, then I'm going to talk a little bit details uh, about how vScale works. So first it takes model code that is written in a PyTorch native, uh, entire PyTorch native way. So there's no need for you to change your model code. You can just execute that your model code on a single device, um, if your memory allows. We don't need to change that. And the vScale will uh, generalize a parallelization plan based on your model, archite neural architecture, and also the hardware environment. Uh, this plan, of course, indicate, uh, ha contains details about you know different dimensions, like parallelization dimensions. For example, for PP, uh, uh, like you would have the PP size, DP size, TP size, and there are some other details. For PP, you need to decide how to split your PP stage, and for TP, you need to decide like how you do sharding of your weights, something like that. And then with this plan, we provide a parallelized API 
that do the deployments of your like uh, 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 distributed training. So it is responsible for, I think, materialize your memory. That is one thing. And also uh, inserting all the communication calls in the right place so that your uh, TP and PP is kind of like uh, working uh, correctly. And within vScale, we have uh, several wrappers. Different wrappers are responsible for different parallel dimensions. So for example, like we have a PP pipe module to implement pipeline, and we have DDP to implement data parallel. And for TP, we have like a D module. Uh, users can call the parallelized API to do all these three um, at the same time, of course, and they can also call each wrapper individually. And at the very core of vScale is dTensor. So the parallelized API will convert the to normal torch tensor to a dTensor. Uh, I will spend a little bit time explaining D what dTensor is. So this is a very core concept here. So dTensor, you can think about it as a normal tensor that is distributed, just distributed stored. So um, in algorithm, it is equivalent to a normal tensor, but it also contains some other meta information. So, for example, uh, placement information. So, how it is stored, it can be uh, replicated, or it can be sharded, right? And it also has like uh, device mesh information. So that indicates where your tensor is stored, or what are the ranks of your devices in the cluster is it stored. The good thing about dTensor is that a lot of communication can be represented as resharding the dTensor. So that is very, uh, you know, uh, very intuitive and convenient for us to implement TP and uh, also, uh, you know, like distributed checkpoint uh, resharding. And all of all, all of our uh, uh, vScale like execution, we support um, eager mode execution. We also support uh, compile mode execution, and also a mixture of eager and uh, compile. So for compile, we allow users to transform your graph, uh, your uh, module into an FX graph, and on based on FX graph, we can do some extra um, optimizations of there. For example, replacing a subgraph with uh, some fused uh, kernels that we have already. Okay, then I'm going to show some um, results. So first is the um, APIs. This is still working in progress, um, but this is the you know the, the end goal of um, vScale. Uh, what we think, what we want to achieve uh, automatically is something like this. So. Uh, users can just grab a, mo uh, a model. Uh, can, you can grab that from Hugging Face. You can, you know, write your own local file. That the, both are fine. Um, those are the model. Th those models can be directly um, executed on single device. You don't need to change the code. And then, vScale will provide a generate plan API to generate automatically generate a parallelization plan. Actually, this is currently under development. It's not available on our open source yet, but uh, we provide uh, some other APIs that is, uh, allows users to manually configure the parallelization plan. So that is uh, yeah, the, the current thing. Um, but this parallelized API is ready, and uh, it, finishes, it finishes the deployments based on the generated plan and your model. And for uh, the training loop, there's also no need to do any code change. So in total, you can do uh, a parallelization, a parallelized training, ND parallelized training, uh, with just like five lines of code, and also finish the, the load and save checkpoint and stuff. So I'm going to show some evaluations. So first thing I'm going to show is piecewise correctness. This is very crucial for us because machine learning people are really, really sensitive about bitwise correctness. If they found that your, well, your frameworks will change my accuracy, then they feel risky for, for using that. 
So don't think this is trivial. We spend a lot of effort to achieve bitwise correctness. And this is one demo that, uh, one of our demos uh, in our open source repo that is NanoGPT. As we can see here, which achieved the bitwise uh, uh, correctness uh, compared against the single GPU. But the PyTorch cannot achieve that. By PyTorch, I mean Torch Titan. So if you know that, uh, familiar with Torch Titan, Torch Titan is a PyTorch equivalence of uh, vScale. Torch Titan cannot achieve bitwise correctness. That means it cannot be used for industrial purpose yet. Uh, uh, vScale can. And there are some other models there on our demos, like Mixro Llama 2, we all achieve bitwise correctness. And then for um, performance, and we also compared against Torch Titan, and for Mixro and Llama 2, we have like 20 uh, to 30% improvements on the MFU. But we're still working on that, um, like uh, uh, continuously improving our performance. Uh, not just for open source model, of course, for also, also for our business models inside the TikTok. Okay, then uh, in the final part, I'm going to show some like uh, futures of um, vScale. So the end goal of vScale are three things. So first, we're trying to make our APIs as simple as possible so that user can easily use that. Uh, uh, on, on their development and maintenance. And the second thing we're trying to achieve is bitwise correctness. That's uh, something we have to guarantee and also decent performance. So with all these three things together, we can provide solid support, not just for uh, business in TikTok, but also the open source community. And here are some comments from, uh, you know, the big guys in our um, community, yes. And here are some like specific items on our roadmap. So we will continue working on our eager mode execution, to try to improve the performance and uh, ease of use. And we will also working on FSDB2. That is something relatively new in, uh, in, in upstream torch. And we try to improve that on performance and the ease of use, blah, blah, blah. And also a compile mode. We will also have people working on compile mode and the auto planner. It's a long way uh, ahead. So here is what we are currently are. There are a lot of things to do and each of, none of these items are easy. And we foresee that there will be several challenges in the future. So first one is that we have a lot of operator support need to do. So like in PyTorch, there are a lot, uh, 800, above 800 operators that we need to support uh, to, and to make them run correctly with D-Tensor. Um, yeah. And also the bitwise correctness, we have to make sure that all of our business model achieve bitwise correctness. So that is a lot of effort. And also there are a lot of like trade-offs between the ease of use and performance uh, that, that we need to do in the future. Okay, finally, these are the collabor contributors and the collaborators to vScale uh, project. We also have a lot of ex excellent interns who contributed to this project. They are not on the list. Um, but, but still, they did a great job. And finally, this is our QR code for our GitHub uh, repo. And like uh, uh, one last word is that we are hiring. So um, if you have the expertise and you share the same vision with us, you are welcome to join our team. Thank you. I'd be happy to take questions. Checkpoint two. Uh, how the
how the vSkill check uh, distribute checkpoints save the uh, the training weights and uh, uh, how can we profiling the parallel uh, training process uh, using vSkill thank you okay so um so for checkpointing uh, that is a uh, actually in, in, in in Visco, that is a sub project uh, called OmniStore, right? So it is developed by, um, you know, some like collaborations here. So it supports automatically resharding your checkpoints um, to a different device mesh, blah blah blah. And uh, yeah, it is like like Visco kind of like uh, um, how to say this. <laughs> So I, I'm not sure if Omni Store is open sourced um, yet. I think it is. I don't know, but yeah, that that is the VSCO checkpointing part. And for profiling, we also have like any timeline and monitor barrier, um, kind of supported, right? So you can you can vis vis visualize your training uh, like in a ND timeline. So let's say this is your TP and that is your TP time. Yes. So um, thank you for this uh, awesome presentation. So uh, I think we all learned a lot. Um, one um, technical details that I, I'm curious is um, because PyTorch is quite sensitive on the device, right? Where the tensors are. Mm. So is there any dependencies on specific tensors, uh, especially when you do like uh, sharding or like reshuffling? Um, those kind of like operations, uh, what are the requirements for the like device that is like support or not support in this case? Um, maybe th there may be some heterogeneous uh, architecture that they have like different hierarchy of like uh, TPU plus GPU plus like CPU uh, mix um, there. So uh, would be great if uh, oh. we, we could know more on this. Thank you. Okay. Um, so for our industrial use, we like most of cases GPU only, but we do have plans for heterogeneous, uh, you know, the new accelerators. We do have plans for that, and uh, that's why we built uh, one of the reasons we built the compile stack. Um, so so to connect the the V scale with some new devices. That's definitely the, the on the on the roadmap. Um, but I'm not sure that we plan to support, you know, like heterogeneous clusters. I'm not sure if we, if we are going to support that <laughs> because like, you know, usually the clusters we use is, uh, is a homogeneous. So it's either GPU or some like new devices. That is a common case in our, uh, like uh, in, inside TikTok, yeah. Okay, thanks.